call the meeting to order. It's about 6.32 p.m. Um, so just before I call the uh, motion for approval of the agenda, just a, a couple of opening remarks. Uh, first of all, I think we should all take a moment uh, to just reflect upon uh, the folks in uh, Ottawa West and Gatineau uh, who don't have a home tonight after the tornadoes, uh, I guess it was Friday night. Um, devastation all across that area, I think we've all heard about it, 60 homes lost from what I understand, something like 600 folks displaced. Um, I'm told a fair amount of damage between uh, the northern part of our township and Ottawa, but nothing that would affect anybody's home, but just trees down, that kind of thing. But another effect that we sometimes don't think, uh, the lab that uh, samples our water tests, and we do extensive water testing. I don't know what the regime is, but I, I suspect that there's multi-water samples per week that we send to the lab, and uh, those water samples have to be tested within a certain period of time. That lab is shut down, apparently, lack of electricity, so we will feel the effects of that, uh, those tornadoes, even in this area, for some period of time. So just to recognize uh, those uh, disruptions to people's lives. Having said that, uh, I'd like to call upon uh, Mayor Taylor, or Deputy Mayor Taylor, for approval of the agenda. Approved by myself, seconded by Councillor Morrell. Almost it's mail and have it. <laughs> that Municipal Council approves the agenda as presented. So the motion is before the table. Those in favor? Motion is carried. Now, before I go on, and I did mention at the earlier session, but I should mention it here as well, uh, I'm, I express regrets tonight. Councillor Barrett uh, is absent tonight attending to a family matter and won't be joining us. And Councillor Smale as well extends regrets. Councillor Smale has been called to a meeting at her child's school and uh, apparently the meeting is taking place at the same time as this one. We all know our kids are the most important things in our lives, so that explains why Councillor Smale is out. And uh, then I'm moving on to item number three on the agenda. Item number three on the agenda is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Are there any disclosures here this evening? No disclosures, the chair will note. And item number five on the agenda is delegations and presentations. We have a delegation here this evening, Mr. John Armitage, uh, speaking about the deeming bylaw as it affects sixth loyalist place. So, Mr. Armitage, you have 10 minutes, and then followed by whatever period of time question or council would like to have for questions. Right, thank you for letting me make this uh, presentation. Um, my, my apologies. If you'd like to turn the podium just out a little bit and make use of it, make yourself at home. Should don't, don't worry about that. It wasn't rigged on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so I will uh, not waste your time by uh, going through the information which is already before you in the memos. You've got all the information before you. And indeed, uh, two-thirds of uh, people here present were also present at the community development meeting uh, two weeks ago. Um, I do apologize, though, for not providing enough information in my first memo for the committee to make a well-informed decision. And indeed, that highlights the problem that, in fact, there is uh, no formal procedure for merging lots. There's no sort of application form. There's no... Um, information about what information you have to give and so on. And uh, the application which is before you is to merge two particular lots on the Solomon Creek subdivision. These are owned by myself and I wanted to build an extra garage on, the, um, on one of the lots which is presently here. I initially put in an application to just build a garage alone on a, on a single lot but that application was turned down because um, it's a residential zone and you have to build houses on a residential zone. So the, the way that uh, I was going to proceed then was to try to merge the lots so that the garage could then become part of the house 
and we could then proceed to build the garage. Um, it would be useful then if, um, if indeed the uh, council could set up some guidelines for people to follow in uh, merging these lots. Uh, because what this might do is it uh, might introduce a bit more flexibility into the building codes and allow owners of the lots to make the most of their existing small lots. So the problem in this particular subdivision is that all of the, the best lots have been sold, they've been built upon, and the best lots are those lots which are out on the periphery. So what is left is the lots which are really in the, the centre of the subdivision and those which adjoin Highway 2. Uh, in order to make these lots a little bit more attractive, I mean these lots have been on the market now for 16 years and there has been no movement on those so it's almost one third of the total number of lots which are vacant. And in order to get some uh, movement, it might be uh, a good idea then to uh, introduce some flexibility into the building codes to allow lot owners to be able to merge lots. So that particularly in those central lots, one could make uh, or build a slightly larger house than, uh, than normal. Um, if council is indeed uh, in favour of this application, it might spark some interest in uh, prospective and in existing lot owners. So what I would like to ask is that uh, perhaps council would like to set up some criteria to be used for merging lots. There doesn't exist any at the moment. And uh, this would ensure, of course, that all the information is presented to council and could include uh, criteria like whether the structures should be joined or separate. So in the memo before you, I've got a proposal which has a breezeway to join the garage to the, to the house. And that's the question as to whether structures on these merge lots should indeed be joined or should they be separate. If they're separate, then they're sort of classed as accessory buildings. And there are different height restrictions that go along with these accessory buildings as opposed to a main building. Uh, and indeed, the height of the structure which is proposed in uh, my memo is indeed within the height restriction placed on accessory buildings in that particular zone. Um, if it is joined to the structure, then uh, perhaps the two structures then could share the same uh, water and sewer connections. If it's a separate structure, then maybe that uh, separate structure should have its own separate water and sewer connections. So there are questions like that with regard to water and sewer connections, with regard to height restrictions, with regard to whether the structures are joined or separate. And these are uh, all issues that uh, uh, would help to clarify issues before we get to uh, um, deciding on the uh, merging the lots. Um, the other issue then is public consultation. And, um, Incidentally, the public cons consultation is a very effective way of getting the word out to the lot owners of the possibility of merging the lots. So if you're thinking then about uh, this being a way of getting some action going on the internal lots, uh, public consultation of this sort would be an effective way of uh, getting them to know about the, uh, the possibility. Um, and then also, of course, uh, one could uh, say that this variance then is just applied to the Sawmill Creek lots. Um, it depends on how widely you want this uh, particular procedure to be applied. So if uh, council is in favor of this application, then uh, council could uh, direct staff to put together a list of what information may be needed to merge lots, what criteria needs to be met, guidelines as to the structures that could be placed there, uh, with regard to their connection to sewers and with regard to uh, uh, their connectivity on the lot. Um, if um, council then might want to defer a decision then until these criteria have been set up. And if you decide to go that route, then you might want to defer a decision on this particular application until those criteria have indeed been set up. So if you think that it's possible that we could uh, go this route, then I would urge you then to uh, uh, think about setting up some criteria for merging lots and putting those in place.
Okay, and uh, so I think I understand your message that you're uh, getting to here, and um, and you're indicating that there are now nine lots vacant out of a total of 22. Yes. I think that uh, we kind of, uh, towards the end of that uh, Community Development Committee meeting, we kind of got the maps out and had a look at that. Yeah. Um, I'll open it up. Uh, council members have any questions of uh, Mr. Armitage? Just uh, <clears throat> if I may, Mr. Mayor, uh, through you. Um, I haven't changed my opinion in, in two weeks. No. Uh, that's uh, the, the principle of the matter is those lots were developed as a, as a subdivision plan, a subdivision. They were to be lots for residential homes to be sold for residential homes, to be connected to water and sewer, and to receive the benefits of those services. And that's why a lot of those lots may be on the small side, because they do have services provided. Mm -hmm. And if we start a garage here, and, and uh, I use, a, I hope you did, I, I see in your recent memo you, you talked about if you had your garage, you could put a, a washroom facility in. I made the comment that if I wanted to put a, a trailer on that site and connect it to the water and sewer, it would have more viability than you in the garage and, and uh, connected and taking away one of the uh, one of the residential lots. I hope that wasn't what, what spurred the, the comment about you put a washroom in to connect the sewer, because we're still missing the, the, the concept is, and the, the official plan uh, presented that, that evening was that we are to try to encourage intensification where services are provided in, within the township. And that's why that subdivision is there as a plan of subdivision for residential homes. Just questions. You know? So anyway, that my that my point is that it's it's uh, I'm like my opinion hasn't changed. You knew where it was back then, and it's a subdivision plan, and I just can't see us wavering on that to create problems in other subdivisions <coughs> maybe wanting to instead of building residences on them. So I want, I, that's, that's my comment, not a question, sorry. Deputy Mayor? Do you know offhand the acreage size of each of those individual lots, six and seven? No, I couldn't, I couldn't give you that offhand. Okay, and I guess the only other question that I have is, have you um, seen the report of our planner? that we got from the planner, which we, as you know, uh, we have a zoning uh, bylaw in place. Um, mention was made of it at the Commission Development Commission. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't see the full written report. Okay, so I think maybe what I'll do is um, I'll just ask if the staff can make a copy of the planner's <coughs> recommendation. It, uh, you didn't pick it up after the CDC meeting. I think uh, you would find it interesting because uh, one of the, the, um, the, I'm not going to say restrictions, but one of the protocols that we work under, because we don't have a planner on staff, is that we have a hired, we have planning clerks and, and the, that assist people through the process, but we have a planner of record, which is a firm in Ottawa. And so when we get these kinds of requests coming forward to us, we asked that planner for their recommendation. And the planner did provide, I think it was a two or three page uh, report that we had with us at the CDC meeting. And uh, so is that a copy of it? All, all I'm asking is that, uh, can we provide Mr. Armitage yeah, a copy? This, this is, not, not for discussion here tonight, but just so he has it with him. Yeah. No. And, and the planner, the planning consultant's report is embedded within the staff report that yeah. is considered. Okay, and other than that, I'll thank you very much for your presentation. If you don't have anything to add, and I don't know whether it comes up later on. I guess it does. It comes up at 8A on the agenda. Okay, uh, moving on then uh, to item number five on the agenda. And item number five on the agenda is the previous council meeting of August the 27th. Councillor Morrell, I think you have that motion. Yes, move on myself, second by 
Deputy Mayor Taylor, the Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the regular council meeting dated August 27, 2018. Okay, the motion is on the table. Or is there, are, is there any discussion? Errors or omissions? And uh, hearing none, I'm about to call the question on approval of the minutes. We'll deal with business arising later. Okay, motion is on the table. Those in favor, please signify. Motion is carried. And so now I'll proceed to the next item on the agenda, which is business arising from those minutes. If, does anyone have any business arising to bring forward? Councillor Morell. I just, uh, it, it basically evolves my questions from the CAO's administrative update, item number 12. I just wondered how, the, I think you did allude to it, the service line warranties uh, situation has rectified itself. They're going to just pull back from the rural landowners being uh, intimidated by a letter, and, and the other one was a 730 truck stop insurance and uh, uh, the Prescott Water and Wastewater Plant RFP. There was something about that. Uh, is that, is that Did you want to give updates or provide updates, updates on those three issues? Uh, certainly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, ser service line warranty uh, folks have um, been advised not to issue any more mail. Um, have also been advised that we will most likely not renew their contract. Um, I address a little further in my CAO's report tonight. Okay. 730 Truck Stop Insurance, the insurance company has advised that they have all the information they need to make a determination, but we have not yet received that. Um, and the Prescott Wastewater Treatment, uh, and actually their water treatment as well, they uh, issued an RFP for management of those systems, and we did attend the site, the mandatory site meeting for uh, our own information, also thinking that maybe we'd have an interest, but they had a fair amount of, of uh, response, actually. They had six other uh, entities there that were interested in responding to the RFP, and uh, knowing that the timelines were very short for response, uh, staff chose not to uh, invest the time when we were trying to deal with Walker Street and a few other matters of our own to, uh, to answer the RFP. As you know, contractors answer RFPs all the time, so they have systems well set up to respond quickly, but we're not that fortunate. Okay, a follow-up? Uh, just follow-up. Uh, we were looking to seek an extension of the RFP if possible. Did they not entertain that or even... There, there was no need for them to do that because they had so much response. Okay. Um, thank you. Deputy Mayor? Yeah. I just have one follow-up. Um, did any of the others that attended the mandatory site meeting express concern with the timelines? No, they didn't. No, oh, we were the only ones. Yeah, that were which tells, tells me, as I say, that they have some expertise in responding to these yeah. things that we lack. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So now I'm on to item seven on the agenda. Item seven on the agenda is approval of various the minutes of various committee meetings that took place during the previous month. The first is 7A, the Port Management Committee of August the 15th. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Moved by myself, signed up by Councillor Morrell. The Municipal Council receives the minutes of Port Management Committee meeting on dated August 15th, 2018. Motion is on the table. Discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. And maybe just for the benefit of folks that are attending uh, their, one of their first meetings, all of these committee meetings which were held during the previous time slot uh, were, uh, the issues were very uh, carefully debated and discussed and uh, so we're just approving minutes rather uh, because we're familiar with the issues. So 7B is the Community Development Committee meeting of September the 5th, Councillor Morell. Yes, I uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Taylor that Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting date is September 5th, 2018. Thank you very much. Discussion or any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. Minutes are approved. And... 7C, the Committee of the Whole Meeting, Administration and Finance, September the 10th, Councillor Morell. 
Yes, <clears throat> moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Taylor that Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Administration and Finance meeting dated September the 10th, 2018. Thank you very much. Discussion to any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. And uh, 7D, the Recreation Advisory Committee meeting that took place on September the 11th, Deputy Mayor Taylor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Morrell, the Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Recreation Advisory Committee meeting dated September 11th, 2018. Thank you very much. Discussion of any? Hearing none, those in favor? The motion is carried. And 7E, the Committee of the Whole meeting Public Works, Environmental Service, and Facilities took place on September the 17th. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Moving myself, seconded by Councilman Morrell, the Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Public Works, Environmental Services, and Facilities meeting dated September 17th, 2018. Thank you very much. Those in favor? Motion is carried. Now, those minutes having been received, and approved by the council. There are a number of recommendations and discussions that took place at those meetings and a number of recommendations coming forward from those various meetings. And so now at item number eight, we'll action uh, some of those recommendations that are coming forward after full discussion at the committee meeting. And other uh, items that we'll deal with under item eight are uh, information items. So the first item under action and information is item 8A, a request for a deeming bylaw at Loyalist Place. Councillor Morrell. Well, I have it. It's moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor that Municipal Council supports the request to consider deeming bylaw for property described as lot 6 and 7, plan 1129. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion, if any? Deputy Mayor. Um, I, I uh, have reviewed the reports, and there's one sentence, I'll tell you, when I looked at this online, I was looking at this, which looked, makes the lot sizes look of equal, and this did not, the other one did not, it's harder to do on, so seeing it on paper, leads me, led me to ask the question about the size of lot six, because it appears to be pictorially significantly smaller than some of the other lots that are in that, that, that subdivision. So I'm wondering if we can put this aside until we can come up with what those lot sizes are um, based on the comment made in the last paragraph about undersized lots that are normally found in old subdivisions because I'm wondering if lot six, although there's two, maybe I'm looking at the wrong lot six. Is that one? Because there's a lot six over here. I guess it's this one here, yes. which just negates my comments. So, in which case, I was forget what I said because it looks like that lot six is the same size as lot seven, and uh, that would not make it an undersized lot. Now, the chair is yeah. still prepared to entertain a motion to defer, or alternatively, call a question. I, I'm prepared to vote on. Okay. Uh, one thing I'm going to say, in the ordinary course of events, it's a uh, common understanding that the mover of a motion might not be expected to vote against the motion, but we're only three here tonight. The chair waives that uh, requirement, and so I'm going to call the question on the motion. Read the motion. Okay. And this says, supports a deeming bylaw, which would in essence support Mr. Armitage's argument. Is right. that clarification? Yeah. So then, so it's in the positive. This, this That's correct. Right. Is in the positive. So if we're in favor, right. we're in favor of the of the deeming. Yeah. Oh, deeming for opposed to, we're opposing. I, I just want that clarification. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. okay. To, to, All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All motions have to be worded in the positive. In the positive. Gotcha. Thank you. Right. Those in favor of the motion, please signify. Those opposed to the motion, please signify. The motion is defeated. Thank you. And so now I'm moving to item 8B on the agenda. And item 8B on this agenda is a severance application B90-18 and B91-18 Burke. Councilor Morell, I believe you have that one. That one 
one again. Okay, I move by myself and second by Deputy Mayor Taylor that Municipal Council recommends in favor of the severance application B-90-18 and B-91-18 BERT as recommended by the Community Development Committee. Thank you very much. Motion is on the table coming forward from the Community Development Committee. Discussion if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. And proceeding then to item 8C, Spencerville Legion Lottery License. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Morrell, that Mr. Council direct township staff to continue to charge up front the maximum 3% of the prize money fee as set out by AGCO with respect to lottery licensing as recommended by Committee of the Whole of Minute Finance. Thank you very much. Motion's on the table. Discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. And item 8D, Spencerville Legion sewage charges. Councilor Morell. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor that Municipal Council. One, adjust the multiplier factor to two decimal five times, two and a half times, the residential unit being applied to the Spencerville Legion effective for the third and fourth quarter billings in 2018. And number two, direct staff to include a cost to perform a rate study into the draft 2019 budget for consideration as recommended by Committee of the Whole, Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities. Thank you very much. Now this is a result of a request from the Legion and uh, was carefully uh, disco uh, discussed at the Public Works Committee meeting. Any further discussion here this evening? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. And that will be an adjustment for only the third and fourth quarter of the year until we uh, look a little bit deeper into that one. And so then, I'm going to item 8E on the agenda, which is the Walker Street update. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Morrell, that Municipal Council authorizes staff and Eastern Engineering Group to negotiate a contract extension for the Walker Street Rehabilitation Project, as recommended by Committee of the Whole, Public Works, Environmental Services, and Facilities. Thank you very much. Again, this was thoroughly discussed at the committee meeting. Very difficult situation. Council is very, always very reluctant to extend the contract. Uh, but as we heard at the committee meeting, a lot of extenuating circumstances surrounding this particular situation. And uh, so consequently the motion coming forward. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. And item 8F, a declaration of land as surplus to the needs of the township. Councillor Morell. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that Municipal Council, one, declare the property described as Concession 6 Park Lot 27, Water Street, PIN 68141-0478, Roll number 0701-701-040-08300 surplus to the needs of the township and notify the public of the intended disposition as per the requirements of bylaw 2015-44 and three, if no other interest is expressed, proceed to sale of property to Steve and Stephanie Summers as recommended by Committee of the Whole, Public Works, Environmental Services, and Facilities. Okay, um, so again, just by way of explanation, this is a landlocked piece of property uh, that was offered up at a tax sale a number of years ago, or months ago? Seven years. Seven years ago. Uh, as a result of the tax sale, there was no bids to purchase and uh, consequently the property was vested in the name of the township and uh, the property happens to abut uh, properties that are owned by Mr. and Mrs. Summers 
and they have expressed an interest in uh, purchasing it and attaching it to one of their existing properties. Uh, the council and the, and the uh, municipal act. The municipal act requires, and the council uh, bylaw requires that uh, the the property be declared surplus to the needs of the township, which is that's what we're doing, and uh, also that we declare our intention to dispose of it, and also that we allow a period of time for other interests to come forward. <coughs> Uh, which is what will happen commencing tonight, and maybe the clerk can or the CEO can advise me. What is the normal period of time that we allow for other interests to come forward? Uh, it'll be 30 days. 30 days. Okay, the motion is on the, on the table. Further discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. And then on item 8G, Unopened road allowance, hands road. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Move by myself, sent by Council Morale, that Municipal Council adhere to the current policy as outlined in bylaw 2015 52 with respect to the request for the township support, sorry, for township support to cover costs of upgrading the unopened road allowance on Hands Road as recommended by Committee of the Whole, Public Works, Environmental Services, and Facilities. Okay, and again, just by way of explanation for those folks that are here, uh, we have quite a number of mileage of uh, unopened uh, road allowances or unmaintained road allowances in the township. Uh, we don't maintain them because there's nobody living on them or nobody using them. And uh, it's, an, it's an unnecessary and uh, expensive public money uh, to, 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 to maintain them to a workable condition. Uh, but from time to time, we get requests from individuals who want these roads open or maintained, and we've consequently had to develop a policy to deal with those requests, which that policy is embedded in bylaw 2015-52, and uh, this recommendation is coming to us to stick to the bylaw. And uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'm about to call the question. Those in favor? Motion is carried. Okay, and now uh, I'm at 8H, which is to appoint Robinson Consulting Consultants Inc. and uh, Councillor Morell. Moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor that Municipal Council appoint Robinson Consultants Inc. to review the 2013 repair and maintenance work on the James Riley DeWitt Richter Municipal Drain in Lot 6 in Session 6 as discussed at the Committee of the Whole Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities. Thank you very much. And again, just by way of explanation, uh, <coughs> Robinson Consultants Inc. are the uh, actually the only really practicing drainage engineer consulting firm in Eastern Ontario, if I recall correctly. And uh, so we get them to do most of our drainage work. This recommendation is coming to us from committee. Further discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. Proceeding then to item number nine on the agenda. Item number nine in the agenda is the correspondence packages. Councillor Morell. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that the Municipal Council receives the correspondence listings for the following dates as previously circulated August 27, 2018, September 7, 2018, September 19, 2018. Thank you very much. Any correspondence directed to the Mayor, the Mayor and Council, or the Township? Uh, is placed in a package and uh, from time to time what package is circulated to council via our mailboxes. If any councillor or member of council has uh, a piece of correspondence that's within the package that they feel needs uh, closer attention of council, uh, the mechanism is that they take out that piece of correspondence and uh, pass it to the deputy clerk uh, for uh, placement on an agenda. So we have received three correspondence packages and uh, this acknowledges the receipt of those packages. Further discussion of any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, 
And so now I'm on item number 10 on the agenda, which is approval of the municipal disbursements and call on Deputy Mayor Taylor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Morrell, that Municipal Council approves payment of municipal invoices circulated and dated as follows. Report, report dated August 27, 2018, 20,985.76. Um, report dated September 4, 2018, 314,729.92. Report dated September 10, 2018, 64,794.18. And report dated September 19, 2018, $2,221,606.77 for a total of $2,622,116.60. Sorry, $6,622,116.63. Okay, the, um, the municipal disbursements are circulated to staff on the Friday, if any, and along with all of the detail. If any councillor has a question with any of the checks, uh, they have uh, Monday to uh, review the, the documentation with the uh, treasurer, uh, if they so choose. Uh, there has been no discussion, I think, on any of these, uh, but is there anybody bring, anybody bring anything forward here tonight, Deputy Mayor? Um, yeah, I just um, have an inquiry as to what the Superior Court payment was for on page one. Twenty thousand dollars Through the chair, that's uh, the uh, from the results of the tax sale. That's the surplus of money received on the on the tax sale in Dundas on Dundas Street and Cardinal. Okay. Oh, okay. So we have to pay, and we keep a portion of the uh, t tendered amount to pay off the taxes, and the, and the balance goes into the public trustee. So that was the residual, 20000 Correct. Mm -hmm. Tax sale. Uh, okay, so I haven't called the question here. Any further questions? Any other questions? Hearing none, vote to call it. Those in favor of the motion, please signify. Motion is carried. All right, now we'll proceed to the reading of the bylaws. And the way our uh, procedural bylaw is written, if a bylaw receives unanimous approval at first and second reading, it can uh, proceed to third reading at the same meeting. Any member of council has the right to vote against the bylaw at first and second reading. And uh, if they do so, that bylaw is held for third reading until the next meeting of council, which is generally a month away, which allows time for other issues, if there are other issues arising, to be explored. So the first bylaw is bylaw 11A, which is a repeal bylaw, asking us to repeal bylaw 1979-1703, Councillor Morrell. Yes, moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to repeal bylaw 1979-1703 to authorize the addition to the tax collector's role in a year for monies payable to the corporation pursuant to the Housing Development Act RS Whole 1970C Decimal 213 and regulations thereunder as amended and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. First and second reading of that bylaw. Discussion of any? Hearing none, those in favor? It receives unanimous approval. It can proceed to third reading. Yes. <laughs> Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that a bylaw to repeal bylaw 1979-1703 to authorize the addition to the tax collector's role in a year for monies payable to the corporation pursuant to the Housing Development Act RSO 1970C Decimal 213 and regulations thereunder as amended by now, be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed in number 2018 58. Third reading. Those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. This is the only piece of land. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, the question? Is that, that the only piece of land that that bylaw applied to? Oh, yes. Okay. And so now we're moving to uh, 
uh, bylaw 11B, which is the removal of an easement at the industrial park, Councillor Morell. Yes, moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to release an easement from certain lands within the township of Eversburg Cardinal, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Discussion with any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried unanimously. It can proceed to third reading. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that a bylaw to release an easement from certain lands within the township of Riversburg Cardinal be now read a third time, finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2018-59. Okay, so just by way of explanation, this easement was put in place across a piece of prop township owned property to uh, permit the uh, running of a hydro line to the Giant Tiger development site. Um, and it was a temporary uh, line that was put in uh, to, uh, to enable development to take place. They needed power on site. Uh, the, the, uh, the distribution center has now been completed. It's up and running. Uh, no one has any further need of this easement. And so we'd like to have it removed from our property, and that's what this motion will do. Those in favor of the bylaw, third reading is carried unanimously, and so the bylaw comes into force and effect. And that's the end of that easement. And so now we're at 11C, which is appoint the Joint Compliance Audit Committee. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Moved by myself, seconded by Council Barrett. Mm -hmm. Councilor Morrell, that the mover be granted to leave to introduce a bylaw to appoint the Joint Election Compliance Audit Committee for the Town of Eversburg Cardinal, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried unanimously. It can proceed to third reading. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Morrell, that a bylaw to appoint the Joint Election Compliance Audit Committee for the Township of Rogers for Prayer will be now read a third time and found the past signed so number 2018 60. And those in favor? Third reading? It's carried. So we're appointing a committee to deal with any uh, election irregularities uh, brought up over the next, uh, I guess they're appointed for the full four years, aren't they? And um, I believe the, all of the um, townships in the United Counties are using the same uh, committee, are they not? Yes. Uh, so just for interest, uh, folks, the members appointed are a chap named Rob Bickerton, Mel Campbell, previous Reeve of Augusta Township, Charles Kellington, Bill Pateman, a previous councillor of the Township of Augusta, and Glenn Mackey, a uh, member of South Nations, I believe. Not and Augusta Township. So those are the members of the committee. Amend item number 11, bylaw 11D, amend the use of the corporate resources for elections policy. Councillor Morell. Yes, moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to amend bylaw 2018-30, a policy regarding the use of corporate resources for election purposes, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, I don't believe you actually uh, called the vote on the bylaw for the Compliance Audit Committee. Oh, I got ahead of myself? Yes, you did. Sir. Well, I'm just on third reading? Right. Okay, those in favor of third reading. Thank you. Okay, it's carried. <laughs> don't worry, I have one foot out of the door. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. One step ahead here. All right, now, uh, where are we here? So we've still got, we've, have we re we've read the motion for the first and second reading of the one on the table, have we not? No, we're about to. We're about to. Okay, <laughs> Councillor, I, I, I read the motion. Yes. I did read it, didn't I? Yes. Okay, so. I did read the motion, do you want me to read it again? Yes, please, if you would. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that a bylaw, that the mover be granted the to introduce a bylaw to amend bylaw 2018-3, a policy regarding use of corporate resources for election purposes, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Very good. Discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? 
So that gets unanimous approval on first and second reading, and I can proceed to third reading. Again, moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that a bylaw to amend bylaw 2018-30, a policy regarding the use of corporate resources for election purposes, be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, in number 2018-61. Thank you very much. Third reading. Discussion, if any. Hearing none, those in favor? Do you want to yeah, discuss at one point? Okay, go ahead. The way that this is worded, it's clear that any meeting held at the St. Edwardsburg Community Center must include every candidate for all wards, not just Ward 2. And I just want to be sure that that is the intent of... Well, is it say members. must be invited? All candidate, meeting, all candidate meetings to which all candidates are invited may be held in the Johnson Community, also known as the St. Edwards. Yeah. So it's all candidates for every ward, all wards. Yeah. Just lay it if there. Invited, I, would, I, would, I would think it's who, would, uh, if I may, through the chair. I would think it's up to the, the people that are organizing it, to who is invited, and if, if they so respond, then they're allowed to go, and this, this covers everybody, or just the ones from the ward. But it's not or, just it's, it can never be or, just the ones from the ward, unless it's worded in there. From the no. way it's worded. Verification. That's what I'm saying. A little bit late for wordsmithing here. I just... Um, now we're on third reading. That can't be amended. Um, well, you can't very well amend it on third. Well, I guess you could on third reading. Um, chair's looking for direction here. It's kind of a touchy point because generally in each ward, just the ward councillors are invited. Yes. Um, yeah. Take it in word all. Uh, well, just which candidates that, actually, are invited. The deputy mayor brings up a good point. So maybe the, what the way to rephrase it is to say all candidates meeting to which candidates are invited. Take out the word all. Okay. All candidates are No, do I have... Um, oh, I'm going to do this. Yeah. As a friendly amendment. amendment. Friendly right? amendment. Yeah. Because okay. we all knew what the intent was. Okay, so I'll accept... On third reading, I'll accept a friendly amendment to remove the word all in the operative clause. I have a mover for the friendly amendment. Oh, okay. I move. Okay, I so we're Ellen Taylor. Okay. Okay, and, and the intent of the friendly amendment is to remove the word all. Those in favor of the amendment. Okay, so I have concurrence there. So now I'm going to call the question on the bylaw as amended for third reading. So, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? All right, so there we have our bylaw. And I'm going now to 11E, renew the unserve managed IT services agreement. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Move by myself and it's seconded by Councilor Morrell that the move will be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to enter into a managed services agreement with unserve Inc. And this shall constitute first and second reading in order. Okay, discussion if any. Hearing none, those in favor? Carried unanimously, it can proceed to third reading. Moved by myself, seconded by Council Morrell, that a bylaw to enter into a managed services agreement with Lawrence Hood Inc. We now read a third time and finally pass signed sealed at number 201862. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. Assumption of Albert Street, Councillor Morell, your bailiwick. Yes, it's moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to establish a highway in the township of Riversburg Cardinal, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. And uh, uh, Albert Street, short as it is, is going to be known as a highway. Uh, and the um, developer of the subdivision has now brought that street up to full municipal standards. Uh, and having done so, then it's now a candidate to be accepted into the township's uh, road network 
and that's what this bylaw will do. Uh, first and second reading, please. Those in favor? Motion is carried unanimously, and we we'll proceed to third reading. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that a bylaw to establish a highway in the township of Beversburg Cardinal be now read a third time, finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2018 63. Thank you very much. Discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. Welcome to Albert Street. Some Another place to send your small plows, Mr. Brown. <laughs> uh, 11 G. Amend bylaw 2015-28, regulation regulate the operation of ATVs on municipal roads. Councilor Rao. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to amend bylaw 2015-28 as amended to regulate the operation of all terrain vehicles on municipal roads, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Discussion, if any, coming forward from committee. Uh, no discussion, vote in favor. Unanimous, it can proceed to third reading. Again, moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that a bylaw to amend bylaw 2015 28 as amended to regulate the operation of all terrain vehicles on municipal roads be now read a third time, finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2018 64. And those in favor? It's carried, and just by way of explanation, it's uh, not legal for ATVs to ride on our township roads or on county roads. And uh, the only way it can be made legal is for the township to pass a bylaw to make it legal. And we do that by means of a schedule or a map which we adjust from time to time to allow uh, travel on short lengths of shoulder between one uh, forest trail and another forest trail and uh, what we've done here with this bylaw is add a couple of little short lengths to the previous map and I'm going to 11H amendment to lease agreement at the port uh, Deputy Mayor Taylor Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Morrell Move to grant H to introduce a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute an amendment to lease agreement for Portage Jonestown property, and this shall constitute first and second reading amendments. Coming forward from the Port Management Committee, discussion with any? Hearing none, those in favor? The motion is carried unanimously. It can proceed to third reading. Move by myself, second by Councilor Morrell, that a bylaw to authorize the Mayor Clerk to execute an amendment to lease agreement for the Portage Jonestown property. We now read a third time on the past signing. Sealed in number 201865. Discussion, if any. Hearing none, those in favor? The port leases a number of properties that we own. We lease it to cottage owners. Each time there's the, the cottage owners own their own their own the cottages, we own the land. We lease the land to the holder of the uh, of the building. But when there's a change in ownership of the building, we have to approve a change of the lease which is what we've done here. 11I, another mutual release agreement uh, for uh, cottage lots. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Um, okay, sorry. Move ourselves, seconded by Council Morrell, that the move to grant leave to introduce a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute a mutual release agreement. It's 9618732 Canada, Inc. On behalf of the Port of Johnstown, the initial constitute first and second reading thereof. Okay, this pertains to the lease agreement that we have with a company uh, that owns the large tank um, that is the host for the calcium chloride. Discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried unanimously. It can proceed to third reading. Move by myself, sent by Council Morrell, that the bylaw to authorize the mayor clerk to execute a mutual release agreement with, Kent, with 9618732 Canada Inc. on behalf of the Port of Johnstown be now read a third time and finally pass signed Senate number 2018-66. Further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? So what has happened here is that the previous owner of the tank that held the lease uh, has sold the tank and now wants to be released 
from his lease agreement. Uh, because we will now enter into a new lease agreement with the new owner of the tank. Those in favor of, I, do, I think I called it, those in favor, no I didn't call it, those in favor, <laughs> those in favor of third reading. Ah, you, you didn't catch me that time. <laughs> okay. All right, so now I'm at item number 12 on the agenda, and item number 12 on the agenda is the CAO's administrative update. And uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask um, Councilor Morell to put the motion to receive the report on the table, and we will uh, not uh, call the question until we've heard the report. I right. uh, move by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor, that Municipal Council receives the CAO's administrative report as presented. So, Madam CAO, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we have some really, I think, great news coming on the economic development front. We, we uh, heard from Mr. Cornell from Griffin Engineering, and that certainly is a nice uh, project going forward in a commercial building in Spencerville. We also have uh, Jones Rail, or Cruise, down in New Exford, and they are going ahead great guns, and uh, folks may remember that Greenergy was a fuel company that came to council some months ago and they have been able to make an arrangement with Mr. Jones and they will be moving forward with some construction there. Um, in fact, we were a little surprised to find out they intend to be up and running by second quarter of 2019, which is very quick for a project of that size. Um, Fire Chief is working with them as, as is uh, the Director of Operations with respect to fire suppression and, and uh, stormwater management on that site. Um, the vacant restaurant machine and welding property has been sold. Uh, it's conditional sale, but I'm told that the conditions are being waived uh, in, in short order and that that project looks like it's going to pour forward very quickly. Um, 730 truck stop property has been sold and we understand that it's another truck stop going in there, so that's Good news, they were in, uh, spoke with the treasurer and advised that they will be in with their architect soon to, uh, to start the process on a building permit there. And uh, so we're, we're happy for all of that. Uh, I do have a correction to the upcoming meeting schedule. I'm sorry I had <laughs> forgotten that Councillor Morrell had asked to have that um, committee of the whole Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities moved to October 16th, the Tuesday. Um, the problem is he gave us too far notice, and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so that will be on the 16th. On the 16th, Tuesday, yeah. 16th. Tuesday the 16th. Um, I do want to talk about the election for just a few minutes because we are finding that uh, the, the threat of a postal strike has meant that the issue of issuance of the voter notification letters is far earlier than normally would be seen. Um, and what that's done is it's limited our ability to make sure that the voters list is in good order. We did our best, but I know that, that there are some uh, folks out there who just did not get onto the voters list, and, and I had some personal experience with that with someone who lives at my house, so I know it, it's not for lack of people trying to do the right thing. I have no explanation as to why those folks didn't get on the list, but we know it's happened. So we're undertaking a li little bit of extra advertising, both print and radio, and, uh, and certainly through our social media and website to make sure that people understand that their, their voter letter came in early, so don't lose it, you'll need it. Um, but if you, get, if you don't get one, to make sure and get into the, into the office and get on the list. Um, and we'll make sure that, that one is created for you and provided to you. Um, as soon as we possibly can. Um, and also, just if you get one for somebody that, that doesn't live at your address anymore, to just uh, return it to the township, and you know you can either mark it return to sender or, or take it into any of the township facilities and any of the staff members will make sure it gets back to the office here. So. But Some, you're not allowed to have vote two pin numbers. No one can vote two pin numbers, that's correct. So. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, it was somebody in South Dundas tried it on the last election. It was amazing how quick it got caught. Char caught, charged, convicted. And yeah. paid. And paid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we attended the Ontario East Municipal Conference, which is, you know, a conference that is a uh, local conference 
economic development focused. Um, it was pretty exciting to see Shelby's uh, graphic up on that first slide of the keynote speaker. Now, she didn't get public credit for it, but it was like, oh, <laughs> that's very good to know here. So that was exciting. Um, and I did manage to get a few minutes with the MPP and, and Mr. Jiggins uh, on a Friday morning to talk about our OCIF application. And I've also sent a, a, an arrow through the Ministry of Economic Development to try and surround that application. We won't hear anything about it until likely in the new year, but uh, I'm hoping that it will get a uh, soft landing. Um, We're going to give it a parachute, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have no news on the insurance uh, claim with respect to Southern Theory Truck Stop, but I imagine that will take some time. Um, I did want to highlight on this uh, ARB hearing, uh, Council directed staff to, at, at staff's recommendation, to deny minutes of settlement, which they hardly ever do. But this one, the minutes of settlement reduced the assessment on the property to zero. And that's just never acceptable. Zero is just not a, an answer that, that we would expect to see. The only way to correct those minutes of settlement was for us to refuse them and file the appear, appeal to the ARB. The owner, however, is a little impatient, would like, um, would like to move things along a little quicker, and I think that's probably why he chose to file a claim through small claims court. Um, small claims court has no jurisdiction to hear this matter. It's, it's already in the, in the process of going to the tribunal or the board. However, we still had to file our statement of defense. And I have notified MPAC uh, at our highest regional level that we will be looking for some support for them, from them because we are currently defending their error. So. Chances of getting dollars is... Too good. But I anyway, know. Right. I can at least. We have, we have no other choice in this matter. No, that's right. Exactly. Um, I think you might have noticed if anyone was in Cardinal today that there's some nice hedging going in on our corner part, the trees being planted. Folks are working on that. I um, wonder if I can just interrupt you right there. Sure. I hate to see that corner lot being designated, or I hate to see the term park being used on that corner lot because while we are making every effort to make it more presentable mm -hmm. until a potential sale should happen and materialize, I think that our long range intention is that eventually we hope that at some point we'll get a, a, an a, a, a person, a, a commercial, mm -hmm. that has a commercial use for that land. Sure, so we'll maybe start referring to that as, uh, as the um Greenfield. That's a good way. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than um, Greenfield. <laughs> yeah. Work on the Cardinal Dock is moving forward. Um, we have some sidewalk work that's being planned this fall. I know there's been a few complaints received about different areas of the township. Um, and so the, the uh, road superintendent has been out and, and assessed. And depending on the price per cubic meter that we get on the concrete work, will dictate how much we're able to do. Um, the Prescott Wastewater Treatment Plant Joint Board meeting was delayed um, in part because I asked for a report from their staff on the outcome of the RFP, which they were not prepared to provide um, on September 20th, so we haven't got a new date, but it's coming. Um, the other thing I wanted to, well, we're doing a whole bunch of drain work, you guys are familiar with that. Oh, and there's another EMS boot camp at the Spencerville Fairgrounds on October 4th. I don't know if anybody remembers the last time it was here, but it brings a whole lot of first responders into town. And I'm told by the folks at the Village Pantry they've got orders for 43 pizzas that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention is you may notice you have new pens on your desk, and uh, they're provided to us by a company called Heirloom Inspirations. But the interesting thing that I wanted to mention about that is that uh, these pens are made exclusively for us and uh, using local woods. So the cedar, the light wood that you see there is from the old Spencerville Hotel. And so it may smell of beer, but... <laughs> 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 
Um, and the walnut, the dark band in the center is walnut from a wood from a property that was located in the village of Maynard. The tree was actually cut down in 1985. And so the, uh, those pens had some local provenance. And the reason we replaced your pens was because we were finding it impossible to find refills for the other ones. So yeah. they were broken. <laughs> yeah. So I just learned all that. Too. Very elegant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, questions of the CAO. I'll start with Councilor Rome. Well, I did have some items that I was going to acknowledge and ask a question to her if I to say about the good work, but she's pretty well hit all the highlights that I've had marked to her, Mr. Mayor, so I will pass on to the Deputy Mayor. Just uh, in terms of the reviews, I noticed that you, you, you have uh, requested that they be delayed. Do we have a delay time? Like, I know you're crazy busy, but we kind of would like to get it done. I, I understand. I just, uh, I, at this point, I'm going to need to defer for at least a couple of weeks, and depending on how busy we get with you. The ball is in your court. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think you can for reminding me. <laughs> Uh, so just a couple of comments from me. Um, first of all, uh, I'm really excited about the uh, economic development opportunities that we've been sort of riding herd on and following up for quite some period of time now. And uh, I understand that we will have a visit from, assuming that the deal closes, closes, that we will have a visit from the new owners of the Prescott Machine and Welding property in the near future. Yeah. And that's going to be very exciting uh, and, a, and a very substantial investment. Uh, the other thing is, is that I have asked, uh, just so council knows, I have asked the staff to arrange a meeting with the new owners of the 730 truck stop. I would like to welcome them as well. We've, uh, just so you know, we've met, uh, the CAO and I have met the new owners of the Prescott Machine Welding property if the deal closes. So we know what they're intending to do, but I would like to meet the owner, the new owners of the truck stop and uh, hear firsthand what their uh, plans are. Uh, the other thing I want to make note about is uh, to reinforce your point, the voters list are in horrendous shape. And we see that as we do our door to door and uh, people are, you know, I mean, the husband's on the list, but the wife isn't. And uh, it's all very disconcerting. Uh, all we can really do under the current um, legislation is refer them to the municipal office and the deputy clerk and in the end result it is the voters responsibility to get their name on the list and uh, as uncomfortable and unpalatable and as unworkable as that seems uh, and it is going to inconvenience a lot of people I think. Um, And I think those were my uh, comments. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it. So, having that short discussion, <coughs> having had that short discussion, <coughs> I have a motion on the table <coughs> that Municipal Council receives the CAO administrative report as presented. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. All right, so now I'm at item 13 on the agenda, which is the council inquiries or notices of motion. Does anyone have anything to inquire about or present a motion? All right, in that case, I'm proceeding to item 14, which is the mayor's report. And again, I'll do the same thing. I'll get the motion put on the floor. And then I'll call a question on the motion after I've made my verbal report. So, Deputy Mayor Taylor, I think you have a motion. Moved by myself, seconded by Council Morrell. The first council receives the mayor's report as presented. Thank you very much. So, my report is fairly extensive this time. Um, first of all, with regard to natural gas, and I think I reported earlier uh, that we are really making better and faster headway than I expected. The Premier's announcement at the uh, international plowing match that the province would roll out a new program uh, that would be non-expense to the general taxpayer and enhance the whole um, speed of delivery of extension and expansion of natural gas uh, gave me a lot of encouragement and the new legislation 
has already been introduced. I'm trying to get a read on um, the details behind that legislation because I think the legislation will be broad stroke and the details will come in the regulations. So I'm trying to get a copy and just determine where their heads are. Um, uh, the second item I want to highlight, and because this is a public forum, and get it on the agenda, is that we have already been told uh, numerous occasions on different forums that council of the township will be asked and provided an opportunity to either opt in or opt out of the retail sales of marijuana in our township, or, uh, cannabis. Uh, this will be a one-time opportunity, it'll be a short window, it'll be, they'll give us some period following the swearing-in ceremony into January to make the decision and communicate the decision. Other councils which are not in a lame duck position such as ours have already signaled their intent to the ministry and I understand that uh, one of the councils rather close to us has indicated that they opt out of retail sales for a minimum of 24 months and reserve the right to opt back in in 24 months. So I'm just putting it out there so that the public is aware of it because I think that the time that council will have to discuss this in public forums will be rather short, uh, short stroked. I uh, want to comment briefly on the fundraiser that was held at the Windmill Brewery on Saturday. This was called Think Rink, a fundraiser for the Prescott Arena. Now, Mayor, myself and Mayor Malanka were invited to join Mayor Todd at that fundraiser. Uh, found ourselves in a rather awkward position because at this point we really don't know what the plan is. Uh, with regard to the future of the of the arena in Prescott. Uh, so I had to kind of, both Councillor Mayor Malan Malanka and I had to kind of skate around uh, that, uh, assured the, um, the folks in attendance that all of our staff has been working extremely hard to provide additional ice hours at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. And uh, from what we hear from staff, that's going to come at some expense to us because we will be hiring or assigning additional work hours to our uh, folks, but we will not be uh, generating in return sufficient revenues to cover that expense. So uh, I'm just indicating that, um, and I also would indicate that our letter to the town of Prescott was hand delivered to them on August the 27th. Uh, but I have not had a response from uh, Mayor Todd or any members, and I'm just going to ask the CAO, has there been any discussion at the staff level uh, so that would kind of give us some kind of an indication as to where this um, issue might land? Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Not, nothing very specific, although the CAO and Prescott did acknowledge our letter and thanked us for our uh, consideration. With so we got acknowledgement through that source. Okay, so I think it'll be some time before the Prescott Council grapples with this. All right, uh, the next issue uh, was the 730 truck stop, which I've talked about, Prescott Machine and Welding, which we've talked about. I just want to mention to Council, uh, we advertised a tax sale at 2057 Dundas Street in Cardinal, and uh, that uh, property was successfully sold at the tax sale, and as the Treasurer has just pointed out, the residual that we received over and above the amount of taxes due was some $20,000. But the good news part of that, and by the way, we pay that to the courts, do we not? Correct. And then the courts uh, attempt to find the previous owner, and if they find the previous owner, it goes to the previous owner? Is that what happens? Uh, the person will make application into the court if they have interest in the, pro in the property. Uh, the, the previous owner? Anybody who had interest in the in the property, not just the previous owner, it could have it could be anybody who had interest in. Okay, so in other words, a lien holder or anybody else, mortgage holder. Correct. Uh, and I'm just uh, want to mention to folks in the gallery that previously, we paid this money into the court, and if at the end of a period of time nobody had shown interest in the property, the courts returned that money to the township. They no longer do that. The, the court, the province of Ontario now hangs on to that money and the, so the residual of $20,000 is not coming back to us. 
it'll rest with the province. But the good news story is that the owner has already begun cleaning up the property. You can notice major improvements and uh, the intention is that that uh, property sold at tax sale was in rather uh, highly visible but rather decrepit condition and it will quickly be cleaned and renovated and put back into habitable, habitable housing and uh, I think it's, it demonstrates to me how important it is that we act quickly on these tax sales to get these properties back in, and up in, in service again. And uh, to that end, I'm still pursuing interests or efforts to clean up three fire damaged properties in the township, 3 Adelaide Street, the recent one, 621 East Street, and 703 County Road 21, although that damage is not visible from the roadway. Uh, CAO has already mentioned our OCIF funding application and a, po a potential we'll be arranging a, a meeting with Minister Clark in order to try to determine the proper channels in the bureaucracy so that we can advocate on that application a little bit more aggressively. Just wanted to report on the Biodesign Conference in Sarnia on September the 12th. There's about 120 to 150 people in attendance. I sat beside a large delegation from uh, New Brunswick. They're very heavily into biodesign and bioeconomy. But the highlight for me was a presentation from Greenfield Global a uh, company resident in our township. And uh, just some background, because I think it's very interesting. Uh, the province of Quebec has passed a law prohibiting the deposit of household waste in landfills, effective 2020, something like that. So it will no longer be allowed to put household waste into landfill in Quebec. 27 municipalities in the vicinity of Varennes, Quebec, where Greenfield Ethanol has their plant, uh, went together and formed a consortium, got some money from the provincial government in Quebec and some money from Greenfield Global, and erected a large anaerobic digester, similar to the one that Mr. Cleary has on his farm. And it ends up being a good news story all the way around. The province of Quebec accomplishes what they wanted to accomplish by keeping household waste out of the landfill. The 27 municipalities now have a place to take that household waste. Greenfield Global ends up the owner of the methane gas which, come, which the digest, di, anaerobic digester produces and that methane gas becomes the source of their heat or supplements their heat source to uh, break down their corn and uh, create ethanol. So I just thought I'd, I'd report that because I had a long discussion with the Vice President of Greenfield Global and pointed out to him that we're only a stone's throw from Ottawa and that there is sufficient household waste in a market of that size to support a, a digester here in our township adjacent to their plant. And as we know, they have lots of land available um, and as interesting as it may be, uh, there's no motivation in Ontario yet because we don't have the provincial law that's motivating the, the thing to happen, nor do we have provincial dollars to assist with the solution. But I just put that out there. Moving on, item number nine on my list, uh, St. Lawrence Economic Development Commission will hold their fall update seminar, I guess you could call it, tomorrow from five to seven at the Lansdowne Municipal Office. Uh, Robert Daly from the port advises me that his entry ticket, which he had been able to secure before the event sold out, is available as he won't be able to attend tomorrow, so if anybody's interested, uh, come and see me. And then the last thing that I want to report uh, is that, um, I'll read it, uh, the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor have completed today, September the 24th, the annual review for the Port General Manager for the period ending June 30th, 2018. The Port General Manager has reached grid position number six and is at the top level of his payment scale level. Consequently, we have directed that his 2018 remuneration be adjusted within the terms of bylaw 
as his performance has met the necessary criteria. So, uh, very happy uh, to have uh, that performance appraisal uh, completed and looking forward to working with the CAO to complete the CAO's performance appraisal timing at, we're no, at your disposal. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my report and I have a motion on the table moved by Deputy Mayor Taylor, seconded by uh, Councilor Morell, the Municipal Council receives the Mayor's report as presented. Discussions, questions if any? Hearing none, those in favour? The Mayor's report is carried. And, oh, beg pardon? Oh, yes, 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 my, my, my apologies there. You had good input from Councillor Morell on that uh, exercise as well. All right, so now I'm moving to item number 15 on the agenda, which is the question period. Questions from the general audience. Hearing none, we have no closed session here this evening. And so I'm proceeding to item number 17 on the agenda, which is the confirmatory bylaw or the confirmation bylaw. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Morrell. For the mover, grant leave to introduce a bylaw to adopt, confirm, and ratify matters dealt with by resolution, and this shall constitute first and second reading now. Thank you very much. Confirmatory bylaw, first and second reading. Those in favor? Receives unanimous approval. It can proceed to third reading. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Morrell, that a bylaw to adopt, confirm, and ratify matters dealt with by resolution be now read a third time. And finally, pass signed field at number 201867. All those in favor of third reading? So, just by way of explanation, the Municipal Act makes it very clear the Municipal Council acts by bylaw only and by no other means. And uh, we have been provided with the uh, wording of a bylaw by all the municipal lawyers and all of their knowledge of the Municipal Act, that by passing this bylaw, everything that we did tonight was a bylaw. So, Chair is looking for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Morrell. Yes, it's uh, moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor that uh, Municipal Council does now adjourn at 7.55 p.m. Is that correct? Yes. 7.55 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Those in favor? Motion is carried. I almost asked for a recorded vote.